I think what we're ready to do now is to combine levels of analysis into single studies. That is, look, at, look simultaneously at upstream social determinants of these health behaviors that we're talking about. So uh, we know that uh, income disparity is a huge determinant of uh, longevity and many health outcomes. But, but, but conduct large-scale projects that, look at the, that both measure and examine the upstream social determinants of health and health behavior at the same time that we're looking at the, at the behavioral and molecular level. Uh, so as others have said, de-silo the science so that we're doing truly comprehensive soup to nuts uh, research projects longitudinally to look at uh, nutrition and health outcomes. And I think now there's been a sufficient enough progress in all the allied disciplines, whether it's molecular epidemiology uh, or behavioral science or policy studies or studies on socioeconomic status and social context and community engagement to really uh, bring these sciences together and do ambitious big science projects that look and measure at all these variables simultaneously. Human immune response is the intersect of a lot of the things we've been discussing, genes, the micronutrients, and, and the infectious disease nutrition relationships. And I, I think many of the mechanisms that we're, we're looking for un underpinning these relationships in regard to infectious diseases really fall back to the immune system. And I, I think we, we, we could learn a lot about um, the, the actions of micronutrients, but also learn a lot about the immune system using these micronutrients as immune probes, if you will, uh, you know, to look at responses to different, different uh, pathogens. The dilemma that the nutrition scientists have, and I say, is that to say we have such a success publication, but when it comes to implementation and put it on operation, this is where we we seem to be losing uh, as to how we can really push it, uh, you know, from laboratory to, to that point of view. Because when we do things in science, it was like a clean cut type of uh, study where we try to control so much of things and we say, here is the outcome. In reality, you stack up things. First of all, we, when we say deficiencies of micronutrients, in reality, it's more than one. It's likely to be complicated by infection. It's also the point of, you know, to target who? Who are we targeting? I think where I would like to go is, is to take the things that differ between individuals and really try and move that to understanding the biology. Because I think, actually, if we've got 200 million people with type 2 diabetes, we jolly well need to know why they've got it and why uh, some people with obesity get diabetes and others don't. I was sitting as a diabetes consultant in, in my clinic, and after a long, slightly difficult consultation with one of my patients with type 2 diabetes, who was about my own age, as he was leaving, he turned to me and said, why do I have type 2 diabetes? And as I kind of stumbled a bit for an answer, he turned to me and said, if you don't know why I've got type 2 diabetes, how can you treat me properly? And I think that is the fundamental question. I think that the, the medium scientists should look at the, how to design the research on advocacy, nutrition advocacy, and also how to design and implement monitoring and evaluation the advocacy project in different levels from the central level to the grassroots level.